Over the past several months, we've talked a lot about exercise, but in today's session, we're going to focus in on an objective measurement to assess your cardiovascular fitness, and that is the VO2 max test. I think this is a great tool that all of us should maybe periodically do once a year or every 18 months to ensure that we're making progressive linear improvements in our overall fitness and particularly our cardiovascular related fitness because we focus a lot as society on lowering lipid levels, on improving uh, cardiovascular risk factors, but how many doctors or how many health professionals do you know outside of, say, Andrew Huberman or Peter Atia or others are focusing on improving the aerobic capacity and improving the capacity of the heart to actually function as it's intended to do? And that is exactly what the VO2 max test is assessing in your body. The units are milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight per minute. And because I recently turned 40 years old, I wanted to get a baseline to see where my level of fitness is at the age of 40 so that I can make linear and iterative improvements in my overall fitness and health as I age. And I feel that you should be doing the same thing. So as you might be able to tell, recently got a cold and probably wasn't the best time to do a VO2 max test, but it just worked out around my birthday. So I did it anyway. And I'll share with you the B-roll of me doing this VO2 max test. To be honest, it was pretty painful because you're getting to the point in your physical activity where you're going to complete exhaustion. And essentially what the test is trying to do is see how much oxygen your body can uptake over a period of time at your peak threshold. And so basically what I was able to find, and I had never done this test before, I wish I had, it would have been interesting to see, you know, because my level of aerobic fitness was actually much better in my 20s than it is now. And I was training specifically for that. But as many of you know, heart disease is still the number one cause of mortality here in the U.S. and throughout the world. And so if we want to improve the health of our entire cardiovascular cardiovascular system. It's not just by lowering lipids, by taking statins and uh, fasting all the time. Exercise, as many of you know now, is very important for improving cardiovascular fitness, for improving capillary density, for imp improving the output of the heart, for improving the capacity of the lungs to oxygenate blood and much more. And this is what the VO2 max is intended to test. So, where did I stand? The peak was 50 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight per minute, but it, uh, the, it sort of plateaued at around 48, which for my age, I'm not bragging or anything, but it, it turned out here to be superior. So whatever that means, um, I was able to maintain a, a high degree of fitness just because of my lifestyle. I'm not a runner. I'm not um, doing any distance cycling. The most aerobic activity that I do is hiking with my daughter. We do a little bit of mountain biking, but in the last several weeks, I haven't done any of that. So this is a nice baseline. And what I intend to do over the next several years is improve upon that. It would be nice to get closer to say 55 or 60. Now, as a reference point, you might wonder where do elite, say marathon runners and endurance athletes, someone like Lance Armstrong, well, it's, it's rumored that his VO2 max was north of 85. Now, some people say, well, it might have been even closer to 90, or actually it was closer to 78. But just you have a, a good idea of an elite athlete is somewhere north of, say, 70. Okay, this is someone who's been, you know, people that are training extensively, uh, doing ultra distance events, okay? That's a lot of oxygen, if you think about that. You know, they're able to provide oxygen to those working muscles in, in a high degree of output. Now, what's unique about this test is it also tells you, it approximates which heart rate zones where your oxidizing fat and where your lactate threshold is. And so um, that was a unique thing about this. And again, I think this is something that's unique because when we hear about our max heart rate during exercise, there's sort of the standard formulation where you take 220 minus your age, and that's your theoretical maximum heart rate. Um, in this particular test, my heart rate, I think it peaked out at about 185 or something like that. So um, anyway, I don't train with a heart rate monitor. I don't use a heart rate monitor because heart rate, as you know, fluctuates based upon your stress level, your level of hydration, your sleep and everything. So what I like to train for is power. And that's what I was actually looking at. I was looking at watts when I was incrementally increasing the intensity on the stair stepper, which it was just a, you know, you can do VO2 max testing on a bike. I'm sure you could do it on a, on a ski erg or something like that. You know, Dan over at F3 Fitness finds 
that the stepper is easy because you don't have tubes getting in the way of your hands. So again, I think it's, this is something that we should all be considering. And I want to get to some science here about the correlation between VO2 max levels and risk for cardiovascular disease and its relationship to the risk that is increased associated with body fat. But first, I just want to welcome you back. Thank you for being here. If you find this content interesting, I would love to know. Let me know in the comments below and thanks for hitting that like button. Also, if you've had your VO2 max tested, I would love to know in the comments below so that others can learn from this as well, what your age is, what your level of fitness is, and what was your uh, estimated or tested VO2 max. That would be super helpful. And just a quick note, friends, for those of you that exercise, one tool that you can take to improve your exercise sessions is electrolytes. Over at Myoscience, we have electrolytes featuring real salt, albion chelated minerals, and also creatine and taurine. Those two aforementioned nutrients are, for whatever reason, often omitted from popular electrolyte products, but they're very important if you regularly exercise. So if you want to get the most mileage from your exercise session, consider the electrolyte sticks by Myoscience. I'll put a coupon code below. That's podcast over at myoscience.com, M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com, myoscience with an X. You can use this before your workout or during your workout. Okay, so let's talk more about the science. Linking a low VO2 max and increased risk for um, actually having uh, dying from cardiovascular disease. Now, I did some quick research to see where is the average American's VO2 max. Most people hover right around 30, which is about half of where I came in. Now, you wonder why so many people were hospitalized from a respiratory virus. I mean, just think about it. If your lungs are sort of stressed out with, say, the flu, the common cold, asthma, allergies, you know, you're going to have less resilience if you get then infected with a pathogen. So it just makes sense that something that we should all strive to improve is our level of cardiovascular fitness. And so I think interval training, I think walking and periodic long duration steady state going for a hike, going for a bike ride, going for a long walk with a friend, a family member, your spouse, your children can be very helpful. And that should just be part of our lifestyle, friends. This is not something that we need to train for. We need to train to prevent dying from premature causes like heart disease. So there's this study here. It's titled Fitness, Fatness, and Estimated Coronary Heart Disease Risk, the Heritage Family Study. And what this study found is the the correlation between increased fatness, we know that the higher your, your BMI, the greater your waist circumference is, the higher your probability or odds of developing cardiovascular disease and ultimately dying from cardiovascular disease, it's much higher. But what about the correlation between low fitness and heart disease? And that correlation wasn't quite as strong as increased fatness, but it was still statistically significant after adjusting for other factors. Essentially, what that means in layman's terms is low fitness levels, surprise, surprise, are linked with increased death and premature morbidity, like reduced function and reduced vitality from heart disease. So it behooves you to become more cardiovascularly fit. And that's why periodic interval training, periodic sprint training, and as I mentioned, steady state, long walks, periodic runs and things like that, maybe on the weekends, can be helpful to improve that capillary density to improve the mitochondrial density and to improve the function of your lungs and also your heart, okay? So now it's one thing to have these theoretical estimators. For example, I have this Garmin watch here and it has estimated my VO2 max at being around 40. Now, my true VO2 max after testing was closer to 50. So just because your Apple Watch or your Garmin says, oh, hey, Sally, you're doing great, you know, because of this and it's, it's you know, sort of its algorithm is estimating your theoretical VO2 max, I think it's worth spending the $75, $100 to actually go get it tested so that you have the real data here. Now, one thing that I was trying to focus on during this test is breathing through my nose because as many of you know, your nose actually has various enzymes and just nasal breathing can increase and has been shown uh, in several studies to improve endothelial nitric oxide, which helps to vasodilate your blood vessels. And that can, of course, then help with the perfusion of blood and the oxygenation of blood. But once the threshold, once my heart rate started to get close to 170, it was almost impossible to breathe through my nose. So I was breathing through my mouth. But I just wanted to throw that out there. For those of you that are doing any sort of cardio, remember when you're doing cardio or working out in general, living, walking, breathe through your nose. That's been shown to be uh, helpful there. But I think this is something that we should all be doing. And so I would love for you to invest in your health, invest in your future, get your VO2 max tested. 
And again, this gives you an objective approximation. It gives you a, a really good idea as to where your fitness is now so that in the future, you know if you're making your iterative progress in the right direction. Are you going down or are you going up? Now, naturally, as you age, your VO2 max will go down over time, but we can slow down the rate of that decline by training. And this is why fitness is so important. So um, I want to thank Dan for helping me out and helping me understand this and um, making the technology available over at F3 Fitness. So if you are in the Kirkland or Seattle area, check, check Dan out. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Again, just a tool that we can look at. So by now, just to summarize, we have a lot of objective tools. We have blood work that we've talked about before. You have the blood work cheat sheet over at highintensityhealth.com you could download. You have body fat analysis via DEXA and that also will look and quantify how much lean mass you have, how much fat mass you have. And then you have the VO2 max test. And so these are, again, most of which are non-invasive. The DEXA has a little bit of radiation associated with it. So you don't want to do a DEXA scan all the time. But outside of that, these are non-invasive tests that again, you can quantify and check in and see if your health is trending in the right or wrong direction and make adjustments with your nutrition, exercise, and lifestyle to improve uh, the, those trends and parameters. So go out and get your VO2 max test. Let's see what it is. Let's make Americans healthy again. Let's make people healthy again. Thanks as always for tuning in. I will link some of these um, articles if you're interested in learning more about this below. Have a great day. Catch you all later. Bye now.